Okay. Good evening, everyone. The time is 6.04 p.m. It is Wednesday, November 4th, and I'm gonna call this special city council meeting uh, to order. Uh, would the city secretary please call a roll? Here. Coach. Here. Ellison. Shield. Here. Rizzo. Rizzo. I think his phone's just messed up. Villalobos. Tobias. Here. Okay. Um, uh, did Councilor Ellison register is here yet? Not yet. Okay. We, we have four members present. We have a quorum. Uh, next up, citizen comments period. Do we have anyone registered to speak online or at City Hall uh, who's filled out a comment form? No one has registered and no one is present. Okay. Uh, if there are no objections, I'm going to go ahead and close citizen comments period. It is now closed. Next up, uh, executive session. Councilor Shield. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Texas Government Code, the City Council reserves the right to convene into executive session from time to time as deemed necessary during this meeting. The City Council may convene into executive session pursuant to any lawful exception contained in Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, including any or all of the following topics. Number one, pending or contemplated litigation or to seek the advice of the city attorney pursuant to section 551.071. K47, low income development on Philomena, changeable electronic variable message sign, 104 South Burleson, New Haven assisted living and memory care uh, delinquent utility account, addendum to the economic development agreement between RRHPI, LP, and the City of Kyle. And then number four, convene into executive session pursuant to section 551.087, Texas Government Code, to deliberate regarding the offer of economic incentives to one or more business prospects that the city uh, seeks to have locate, stay, or expand in or near the city. Project Giving Tree and Project Shamrock. All right, it looks like we're ready to go. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. M motion to reconvene. Second. Second. Yeah, it's been moved by the mayor, seconded by Councilor Ellison. Is there any uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, there is no action taken during executive session. There will be action taken now. Councilor Shield. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to finalize negotiations on and sign the addendum to the economic development agreement between RRHPI, LPI, and the city of Kyle 
in a uh, form approved by the city manager and city attorney. Second. It's been moved by Councilman Shield, seconded by Councilmember Villalobos that we uh, approve the uh, agreement with HBI in a manner consistent with uh, the uh, city attorney and on behalf of the city manager. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Scott, do you want to give a uh, statement about what, what this is? You can keep it simple. It's pretty simple. Mayor and Council Scott Sellers, for the record, this is an agreement that allows the uh, city to extend its third party building inspection company, ATS, uh, to do uh, specific inspections for the uh, facility in the, in the uh, HPI industrial park. Okay, sounds good. Um, must have a need. I guess that's good too. So uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Was that the only action we needed to take? I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mayor. Okay, I'd motion like to, to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by the mayor, seconded by Councilor Shield that we adjourn. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. We are adjourned. Uh, we will stand by for 60 seconds uh, uh, to switch over the feeds and get ready to gavel in the regular meeting. Good evening, everyone. The time is 7.18 p.m. It is Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, and I'm going to call this special city council meeting to order. Would all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, Councilor Shield, go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, would the uh, city secretary please call the roll? Mitchell. Here. Coach. Here. Ellison. Present. Shield. Here. Rizzo. Here. Via Lobos. Here. <laughs> All right, seven members present. We have a no. quorum. Next up, approve. Yes, here. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's cutting in and out. My feet is so. Okay. Yeah, we have forgotten Councilmember Tobias, but he said present. <laughs> okay, seven members present. We have a quorum. Next up, uh, approval of the minutes. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve the City Council Special Meeting Minutes from October 20th, 2020, and the City Council Meeting Minutes from October 20th, 2020. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Shield, seconded by Councilmember Rizzo, that we approve the minutes for October 20th, both special and regular. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All, all, all opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Next up, citizen comments period. Uh, do we have anyone registered to speak online or has anyone filled out a form or uh, is anyone present at City Hall who would like to speak? This is Samantha Armbruster, Director of Communications. Good evening, Council. I just wanted to take a minute to allow our two newest Team Kyle members to introduce themselves. We now have a marketing and multimedia specialist as well as a video production specialist. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Xander Baker, and I am the marketing and multimedia specialist with the Communications Department. Hello, my name is Grant Bowling. I'm the videographer for the city of Kyle, and I also have been doing the broadcast section of it too. Welcome. Welcome, John. Well, welcome all. Yeah, this, you marked the completion of uh, our mission to bolster our communications department. So welcome to the city of Kyle. 
Samantha's been doing great. I hope you're having a good time. Do we have any other comments? There's no one else. Okay. If there are no objections, I'm going to go ahead and close citizen comments period. It is now closed. Uh, next up, uh, agenda item number four, presentation, Veterans Day City Council Proclamation. Councilmember Rizzo. Um, I'd like to yield the floor to Councilmember uh, Villalobos to read the proclamation, if he's willing to. Councilmember Villalobos. We might have lost him. I'll go ahead and read it. <clears throat> City of Kyle City Council Proclamation. Whereas a number of City of Kyle residents and staff have served our great nation in the United States Armed Forces, and it is appropriate that their patriotic and unselfish service be suitably recognized and commemorated, and whereas the City of Kyle celebrates the employment of these veterans who have served our country proudly and now serve in both public and private sector jobs in our community. And whereas the citizens and co-workers are our sons, daughters, husbands, wives, friends, and neighbors who are willingly answered the call to serve. And many have died so that we may live free in this great republic. And whereas these brave citizens have brought honor and distinction to the city of Kyle through their service. And whereas Kyle is home to the VFW Post 12, 12058, one of the most recognized and distinguished VFW's post in the nation who stands ready to assist and advocate for our local veterans. And whereas Kyle is also home to the AMVETS Post 115, representing one of our nation's most active veteran services organization and providing valuable services to veterans to include extensive work with veterans to assist them with applying for veterans benefits providing for by the Hayes County Veteran Service Office, and whereas it is appropriate that the patriotic and unselfish service and sacrifices of all veterans and their families be suitably recognized and commemorated. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and the city council of the city of Kyle, Texas, that November 11, 2020, shall hereafter be known as Veterans Day in the city of Kyle, and do hereby call upon all citizens to show their appreciation to our brave men and women for their service to our great nation and to focus on their achievements with appropriate patriotic displays of the American flag and the participation of veteran activities. Signed and entered on this fourth day of November, 2020. I would just like to add that um, we, we, we have an amazing um, citizenry of, of veterans in our, in our community who are very active. And I've, I've been very blessed to work with them, whether it's through the VFW, through the Knights of Columbus, or just in our parishes or in the community. Their resolve and their work ethic and their commitment to community just goes beyond. And I, I just want to thank them all for their service and for their sacrifices. My brother especially is a, a veteran and gave 11 years to uh, the Marine Corps. And I know everything that he sacrificed in that time, not being there for the first birth of his first child uh, and missing football games and basketball games and everything that they, these veterans sacrifice is, to, is for us, our community, so that we have the opportunity to vote in, in, in this nation of ours for who we want and to uh, exercise our free speech. But on top of that, they give selfishly of their time and of all of their strength. And I just want to thank them for all their service and for all they do for us. And may God bless all the veterans. Thank you, Councilman Rizzo. Any further comments on that? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, as And I've said this before. Um, as the granddaughter of a World War II vet, uh, the daughter of a Vietnam War vet, and the current partner of a uh, an active military 
uh, person now. I thank you for bringing this forward. This means a lot to not only myself, but also to the members of this community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Shield. Hey. Thank you, Councilmember Shield. Councilmember Allison. Yes, well, uh, I, I second that, and uh, I, I believe Councilmember Rizzo has caught the pulse of this council and this community, really, with the, that proclamation and his, his words of uh, gratitude and thanks for our men and women in, in our uh, military services uh, that um, are currently passed uh, and even given the ultimate sacrifice for our country to do exactly the things that Councilmember Rizzo and Councilmember Shield were talking about uh, and to do the exact thing that we did yesterday in uh, participating in this Republic's democracy uh, through uh, an election. So uh, thank you, Councilmember Rizzo. We certainly appreciate you leading the effort uh, on this uh, with Veterans Day being next Wednesday. And certainly, uh, you know, this city is um, long overdue on some uh, recognition to our veterans. And I think we are making great strides with that. And we want to continue to work with uh, uh, the VFW and the AMVETs here in Kyle and in surrounding areas to continue to show our support and gratitude for uh, our military service members. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilor Ellis. Did anyone else? All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item then. Uh, agenda item number five, presentation by Bowie, uh, summarizing public safety center bond, uh, public education activities. Mr. Hendricks. Mayor, I'm happy to uh, introduce our, our Bowie team to give a presentation on their efforts so far and to congratulate them and everybody else on our committee and to the police department and to the city on the successful uh, bond election from yesterday. So this time, uh, Bowie team, it's all yours. Thank you, Jerry, I appreciate that. Um, good evening, Mayor Mitchell, Mayor Pro Tem Coach, Council Members and City Manager Sellers. For those of you who may not know, my name is Ashley Kegley Whitehead and I'm partner and co-founder of Bowie and Company. We so appreciate the opportunity to be with you again here virtually and are excited to share a final update on the public education campaign for Proposition A. As a reminder, the city of Kyle hired Bowie and Company in late May to begin preparing for community outreach around a potential public education campaign for a public safety center. The RFP for this work specifically outlined the need to communicate the dollar amount for the bond, the effect the tax rate would have on city ratepayers, and the size, use, and overall need for the facility. Over the last five months, our team has worked closely with city and PD staff to understand Kyle's public safety services and the needs of its police department while preparing any and all necessary materials for a public education campaign if a bond was to be called in August. I would like to emphasize that our job was strictly to educate voters, not advocate for or against the bond. This is a delicate balance, as you all understand from the dais, though many community members may not, especially given that this was the city's first formal public education campaign. So I did just want to underscore that sentiment. Our primary objective was to develop and execute a campaign that would ensure community members understood the details of Proposition A so that they could make an informed decision at the ballot. While a significant amount of work has been done by Bowie and Company, we were part of a larger team supported by city staff, the bond task force, as well as your bond legal counsel, Vicar Staff, Keith Delgado Acosta. On the heels of election day, with unofficial results showing that Proposition A has passed with 55.49% of the vote, we wanted to share a recap of our team's work and summarize the components of our public education campaign. We'll certainly leave time at the end to answer any questions, but with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Patty Hickson. She's been faithfully leading the day-to-day -day activities for the city of Kyle in this campaign. Patty? Thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Mayor and Council Members. I apologize, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty um, sharing my screen. I'm gonna try one more time, uh, just in case, and if not, I know Samantha was going to attempt um, 
Is this showing up? It looks like it's just showing me. <laughs> it's one moment. Well, I'll go ahead and get started um, just as Samantha uh, hopefully starts screen sharing. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, if you'll move to slide, uh, slide four for me, that would be great. Thank you. Well, as Ashley mentioned, uh, our team's work with the city officially kicked off in late May when our team began preparation for a potential bond election to be called this fall. And then on to slide five. Since our kickoff meeting in uh, on May 28th, we have met with city staff and or the bond task force uh, for a total of 23 planning and coordination meetings. And in addition to our weekly team meetings, we've held multiple ad hoc calls with members of the bond task force and city staff uh, to discuss campaign strategy uh, and updates as needed. Prior to the bond election being called by city council on August 17th, our team conducted 11 one-on-one -on -one interviews with uh, stakeholders identified by the city as leaders across the community to hear from them what they believe are the needs of the Kyle Police Department and what they wanna see from the city in terms of public safety services and what their reactions would be to a potential bond and the associated uh, tax impact, as well as their recommendations around how to best inform the community about a bond election. And if you'll change to slide six. Um, based on our team's experience and expertise in public education campaigns for um, bond elections, along with the unique perspective of these community leaders, we developed our educational messaging and materials to reflect the following priorities. Sharing an accurate project cost and timeline to construct a public safety center if the bond passed, sharing details on the anticipated financial impact for residents with an emphasis on the tax being deferred until October 2021 in light of COVID, sharing how the proposed public safety center would address the current inadequacies of the police department facilities and allow for the department to be fully staffed to serve the Kyle's growing population, and sharing how the new facility would serve the entire community through the creation of an emergency operations center as well as by providing dedicated space to expand community-based programs and services. You'll move to slide seven, thank you. We also refined our community outreach strategy, prioritizing the following channels that we heard were most important through our conversations with community leaders, as well as in our meetings with the bond task force. Virtual open houses or in-person events where possible, the city's website, social media, especially Facebook, the city's weekly utility newsletter, and ads in the Hayes Free Press and Community Impact. We'll move to slide eight. As a result of all of this, uh, the Bowie & Company team developed a library of materials to provide general election information and educate Kyle residents about Proposition A. Our efforts included designing a logo to build recognition and awareness among community members, which was created in both English and Spanish. And then number 10, uh, we also decide, uh, designed and built two bond web pages, one in English and one in Spanish, with all of the details of the proposed public safety center. After launching the bond web pages on August 18th, our team made nine updates over the course of the campaign to add new FAQs and other important bond information based on community feedback and questions we were receiving. Since its launch, the English webpage has been viewed 2,213 times by 1,860 users with an average time on page of four minutes and nine seconds. The Spanish webpage was viewed 138 times by 73 unique users with an average time on page of one minute and 51 seconds. And just for reference, two to three minutes of time on page at, for a website is considered excellent engagement. And that reflects that visitors going to the bond website truly were spending time educating themselves using the materials and the messaging that we provided. And then on to slide 11, along with the website, we worked with uh, the bond task force to draft, design, and publish a fact sheet, as well as a frequently asked questions document about Proposition A. Both of these documents have been available in English and Spanish from the bond web pages since they were launched. And they were also distributed at our hybrid open house on October 8th, as well as at the Movies in the Park event held by the city on October 16th. Slide 12, please. 
We also scripted and shot and produced a general bond campaign video about the current police facilities and the proposed public safety center. This video was created with an English voiceover and also produced a second version that had Spanish subtitles. It was embedded on the bond webpage and shown during each of our community open houses, which we'll share more about in just a moment. And since the video was published on YouTube, it has also been viewed independently 188 times. Next slide, please. Our team also scripted and produced a second bond video specific to the current KPD facilities. This video was created in mid-October in direct response to resident questions that were being shared during our open houses and additional questions being received by KPD representatives in the community. One of the things that this council heard uh, our team commit to when we presented on September 1st was being open to input and being flexible and nimble throughout the process of um, this campaign. And this video in particular reflects that. Um, since it was published on YouTube on October 22nd, it has been viewed 423 times. Next slide, please. Bowie and Company also designed and produced car magnets for city uh, vehicles. And we designed a digital uh, billboard display about Prop A, directing residents to the Bond website for more information. We provided the city with a total of 60 car magnets to use on various KPD and other city vehicles, which have been out in the community since early September. The digital billboard has been in rotation on the city's two billboards located off I-35 approximately 700 times since September 30th, when it was running every 10 minutes during high traffic windows of time from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from six or 4 to 6 p.m., excuse me, on weekdays, as well as 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on weekends. Next slide. We also designed and produced business cards for the police department and city staff to hand out to community members who might ask about Proposition A, along with drafting a phone script to support any calls to the police department or city staff uh, so that they were sure to be able to direct them to the right resources for the bond. A total of 1,200 business cards were provided to the city for distribution to community members. Next slide. We also developed and maintained a social media editorial calendar to support the communications team's work on social channels uh, with 65 pre-drafted educational posts and 15 custom graphics to support posting one to two times per week about the bond via the City of Kyle social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as the police department's Facebook page. We supported the city in responding to a number of community questions shared in the comments of the Facebook page posts. And we created a library of 15 educational posts of suggested content for city council members to share from their own accounts. Next slide. Bowie and Company also provided 11 weeks of content for the city's weekly utility e-newsletter, sharing information about the bond as um, from the time it was called, the week that it was called, through last Friday, the last day of early voting. These, uh, for these newsletters, the city tracked 26,975 opens for the issues including bond-related content. And from those 11 issues, there were 249 clicks on content specifically related to Proposition A and 835 clicks for general election content. Next slide. We also designed, produced, and coordinated the distribution of a direct mailer that was delivered to every Kyle resident on September 15th, ensuring that every resident had the chance to learn about Proposition A, with details on the proposed public safety center, as well as election information. We worked with Community Impact on this distribution, delivering our mailers to all 21,275 residential addresses in the city of Kyle. All information was provided in English on one side of the mailer and Spanish on the back side. Next slide. We designed and coordinated the placement of print advertisements in the two primary local publications, including the October 7th issue of the Hayes Free Press and the October monthly print issue of Community Impact, which was delivered to all Kyle residents on October 14th. Next slide. And we developed an informational flyer about Proposition A that was distributed at the city's Trunk or Treat Halloween event on October 24th, which had approximately 500 vehicles drive through. Next slide. 
In addition to all of the materials just mentioned, we also set up a dedicated email account and hotline where community members could reach out at any time to learn more about Proposition A, which our team managed throughout the campaign. This contact information was shared across the materials that we developed to provide residents the opportunity to reach out and have their question answered about Proposition A. Since the bond was called, we received a total of 14 unique inquiries, seven calls and seven emails, all of which our team worked closely with the city to answer using the communications protocol that we developed. Next slide. We also coordinated and hosted a series of five open houses for the community to provide opportunity for residents to learn more about the bond and have dedicated time with representatives from the city to answer their questions. Next slide. Held every Thursday from September 17th through October 8th and on, webinar, um, and on Tuesday, October 13th, these events were primarily virtual, held via Zoom webinars, and they were also live streamed to the city's Facebook page, as well as the YouTube account and Kyle 10. The October 8th event was a hybrid open house with the option for Kyle residents to attend in person at City Hall with safe social distancing measures in place. And to further promote accessibility for all Kyle residents, we offered Spanish interpretation for three of the five open houses and closed captioning services were available at our hybrid open house. Next slide. We promoted the open houses using Facebook events, of course, with the support of the communications team, as well as digital flyers. And for the hybrid open house, we also printed 50 posters that went up around the city of Kyle before the event and our Hayes Free Press ad that I mentioned before highlighted the last two open houses. Next slide. Overall, we, will, we were able to track a combined total of 161 attendees across Zoom and Facebook for the five events. However, please note that these don't account for YouTube or Kyle 10 live viewers. However, each, uh, each open house was recorded and posted to the city's YouTube account and that was to allow anyone who was unable to attend a live event the chance to learn more about Proposition A. And the five recordings were viewed a combined total of 145 times on YouTube. Next slide. Finally, we worked closely with the city's communication team to support media outreach and coverage about the bond election, providing the following materials. A press release to announce the bond election for a public safety center once it was called, which the city's communication team shared with media on August 18th. A media alert about a series of community open houses, which was distributed by the communications team on September 16th. And a second media alert specifically for the hybrid open house that was hosted with virtual and in-person components, which was distributed by the communications team to media on August 5th. We also supported the city as well as members of the bond task force and the mayor in preparing for three media interviews about the bond election. All of this media outreach and support resulted in 21 unique pieces of coverage about the bond election prior to election day, further educating the community and raising awareness about the open houses submitted um, about the details of Proposition A. And with that, I'll turn it back to Ashley. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> As you all can see, a lot went into this campaign, but it is important that we end with a note of gratitude. Simply put, thank you. We know that the city made an investment by hiring Bowie and Company to lead its public education campaign. And as we close out our work together, I believe the recap and the data Patty just shared provides a thorough overview of the extensive work done by our team to ensure that all Kyle voters were informed at the polls Again, we were focused on education only, not advocacy. That said, we also wanted to share one final data point, which reflects our team's investment back to the city of Kyle. While the total cost to the city for our team's fees as part of this campaign was $65,000, roughly 400 hours of our team's time, Bowie and Company ultimately worked more than 1,000 hours over the last five months to support this initiative providing a total value to the city of more than $200,000. Bowie and Company has led a number of public education campaigns and bond elections throughout Central Texas, and each initiative comes with its own unique challenges. 2020, as you all know, has been a year like no other, but despite the circumstances with COVID, we were able to work with the team and the city 
to successfully inform residents about Proposition A and ultimately see the bond pass last night as a result of your voters understanding the need. As we wrap up our presentation this evening, we want to ensure that we really have provided you with all of the information you need regarding Prop A. So with that, I will say thank you and we'll turn it over for questions. Thank you, Patty, and thank you, Ashley. Uh, any questions for Bowie or staff? I don't have a question, any Mayor. Comments, feedback? I don't have, this is Council Member Rizzo, I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for your help, Patty uh, and Team Bowie. Uh, thank you for all that, uh, for educating the public on the needs of our uh, public safety center. Uh, I, ju I just want to thank staff, uh, the council, it, everyone involved in this project, citizens that also were involved um, to see this to fruition. Um, from the start, we wanted this to be a decision to build a new public safety center for Kyle left up to the citizens. And I, I'm glad that we were able to uh, bring this forward in a bond and the citizens were able to vote on it. And I, it's been since 2013 since we've had a bond, and I, I was confident that citizens would see the need for a police department and that um, they would make the correct choice that was in their best interest. So I, I just want to thank everyone who voted, everyone who participated, and uh, uh, the task force as well, and all the support we had for this uh, public safety center. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilman Rizzo. Anyone else? Yes, this is uh, Councilman uh, Villalobos, and uh, definitely, uh, I, I, I appreciate Bowie in receiving and understanding the message that we were that we were putting out. I think it uh, it lends itself to the to the idea that uh, we did connect with our community and with the needs of the community. I think first and foremost, also is that you know with this comes a large amount of responsibility. And um, although, you know, the bond did pass, uh, the responsibility of, of, of our future as a, as a city and the responsible uh, uh, use of funds and taxpayer dollars is gonna be uh, of, of, of most importance, right? So I think my, my take on this is, is, is also is that along with, with this bond, some propositions passed. I think also the messaging got clear is that yes, we support our law enforcement and at the same time, we are asking uh, for some more engagement, uh, some more um, uh, transparency, and uh, some more um, uh, the ability to engage the community with data that they can understand and and utilize to 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 see what our department and our and our people of our, our city are doing, particularly in the police department. Um, so, I, I believe that the message got across very clearly. Um, that we do to support law enforcement, and at the same time, there's a there's a there's a responsibility to engage the community appropriately and consistently, and to allow uh, the, the 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 constituents of and all the people of Kyle to be a part of, of of this building, be a part of this organization, and be a part of what they're doing in our community on a on a regular basis. So. Thank you so much, Bowie, for all your hard work and and, and sending that message out clearly. Is that uh, uh, great work and uh, very proud uh, to be a part of this. As are we. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Villalobos. Any further comments? Mayor. Yes. Uh, Go, go ahead, ahead Councilor. Sure. Thank you. Oh. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that um, now that the uh, majority of the voters voted uh, to have this uh, public safety building um, constructed. I just uh, want to impose on council, future councils, to make sure that it does keep uh, it the progress that we've started and see this building actually built and utilized for um, the police department and the city of Kyle. So. Thank you. Thank you, uh, 
Casper Shield, uh, completely concur with that and agree with that. Um, I second everything that uh, Councilmember Rizzo said, and I want to piggyback and highlight the great comments by Councilmember Bill Lobos. Uh, I think uh, a lot was learned about our community uh, these past few months, and, and particularly with the the, the vote yesterday. Um, and, and you can want both, and you can uh, support your law enforcement community and then want greater en engagement and collaboration. And I think that's what the citizens of Kyle clearly vo voiced uh, in yesterday's election. Uh, so I look forward to continue the work that we've done and, and the progress we've made. And I, I concur with you, Councilmember Shill, uh, to get the most out of what, what benefits uh, our agency, but also benefits our, our, our uh, citizenry and our city as a whole, because uh, that's what this is about. Um, I do want to take some time and, and thank uh, staff, um, uh, our communications department, uh, our chief of staff, uh, Jerry Hendricks, uh, Pervez, our finance department. Um, there, there are other staff that were pertinent and part of this process as well. I want to thank them for their tireless work and effort on this. Uh, I want to thank our um, our uh, PD as well for collaborating with us. I think uh, you know one thing that was lost, I think, uh, but was an important important point to make is this was a two year progress, uh, and while not in the entire two years was spent on coming up with the single site option, it was two years spent of really looking at solving this problem once and for all. Uh, as our city has grown exponentially and therefore the needs uh, and services also grow with that. So uh, I wanna thank uh, RPD for working with us over those two years to, to find this solution. Um, I think a lot of praise and um, well-deserved praise should go to this council. Um, I don't typically try to use uh, this platform to praise myself and my colleagues, but I think a lot of that goes to this council for having the, um, the vision and wherewithal and strength to try and solve this problem over two years and stop kicking the can down the road of something that was much needed in our community. And it was a difficult decision for this council. Um, I was a part of every bit of it and I commend my colleagues for standing strong and, and, and wanting to solve this problem. It's not easy and certainly Nothing I ever expected uh, to to address um, in in the manner that we did, but to, this is the direction that we were um, through the process here to, and it and it came to fruition. Um, I definitely, uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank our Bowie and Company team. Um, I know it it was a um, a challenging three months, and certainly you all have done a number of these, and. It, clear of your experience with that but uh, I'm sure you've never dealt with uh, some folks like us here in the city of Kyle and uh, thank you all for being flexible and, and uh, with us and, and rolling with the punches and rolling with the changes no matter how early or late in the game they were it was all a, a team effort to try and uh, inform the voters as much as possible and I want to thank uh, Ms. Giggly Whitehead for uh, reiterating the point of the informational campaign I know it was a struggle for a, a lot of folks and certainly um, something that this community has never engaged in or, or done before, an informational campaign on a, a bond that was uh, initiated by the city. Uh, it's definitely a challenge to be to stay on that line of being inform informative and not uh, advocational. Um, and I want to thank my colleagues, uh, you know, Councilmember Bill Lobos, Councilmember Rizzo, uh, the mayor, uh, and really the, uh, many of the other council members as well behind the scenes and, and, and working on the town halls and, and speaking in those that that definitely was something that was different as well and, and a challenge. So uh, thank you, um, Bowie, for your, your tireless effort on this. And uh, uh, hopefully you've learned a lot about the city of Kyle and also uh, what our resolve is and, and your personal, uh, your team's great effort and resolve through challenges as well. Um, so thank you all for that, and I'll yield the floor. Thank you, Councilmember Ellison. Is there anyone else? All right. With that, we will move on. 
Congratulations, everyone. Yes, thank you all again. Team Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, next. Thank Bye. You. Next up, agenda item number six, CIP road projects and consent agenda presentation. Go ahead, Leon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Leon Barba, City Engineer. Uh, this is our regular update on our projects. Uh, Lehman Road, uh, last pay estimate we received, they're about 98% complete. Uh, they still have some uh, items they're trying to wrap up. Uh, so we did identify some ADA issues and they're being repaired uh, and being completed. Uh, we are planning to seal the bridge this week. I believe that's Thursdays when they're going to try to do that seal. It's a real simple. It's, it's no different than sealing a, a wooden deck. It's just it's a clear material. Uh, takes a little bit to dry, but it's just a, a clear seal. Or so uh, that uh, that's usually done about every five to seven years on your bridges if there's some uh, superficial cracking or anything like that. So uh, that's being done this week. Uh, next one is a uh, Burleson. Uh, that one's about 93% complete based on the last pay estimates. Uh, again, this contractor is also working on this punch list. He still has quite a few to, to, to wrap up. And uh, we're also working on finalizing the quantities for this particular project. Southside wastewater improvements. Uh, we're at 69% complete. We have our one crew still working at the lift station. Uh, second crew is there working by the, the uh, prison that TDCJ, they're working on the, uh, some wastewater lines and the reclaimed water line that's there. Uh, uh, they've uh, completed the work at, uh, that was by the public works department. Uh, the crew that we have during the bores, they are now working on the north end of the uh, project, trying to wrap up the last two bores for that particular project. On the treatment plant expansion, uh, we're still reviewing the last pay application. So it's, just, it's the same number that we had the last time we presented. It's 14.4% complete. Uh, form work rebar and pipe is going on. Uh, it, there's installation of duct banks and manholes throughout the site. Uh, the the uh, schedule, it's still on schedule, still uh, same project uh, time scale that we're looking at and trying to complete this project on time. I have a couple of pictures for you. Uh, this is the overall uh, site um, that was taken on October 30th. As you can see, it's a pretty expansive project. The, the next slide again is, uh, you've seen, you saw this in last, uh, at the last session. I think they had uh, quite a bit of the steel in, but uh, when you look at this next picture, you'll see that it's, uh, but I can't say it enough, but it's very impressive. I've done a lot of work around bridges and uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. So um, it's a very substantial project. Our Button Creek Interceptor, uh, we've awarded the contract. Uh, we have a pre-construction meeting scheduled for next week. Uh, we plan to start our project December 1st of uh, this year. Well, site number four, uh, we had a pre-construction meeting today and uh, we were trying to start this project a little bit sooner than December 15th, but apparently the water usage is a little bit high because of the uh, recent lack of rain that we've been getting. So we're going to postpone it to December 15th. Again, the contractor was ready to start today, but uh, we're going to have to postpone and wait until the uh, water usage uh, goes down so we can make sure we have enough water uh, for our citizens. We will be bringing the Elliott Branch Wastewater Improvements Project to council at the next meeting. Uh, the uh, estimated cost for this project was originally about 6.2 million. Uh, the bid came in at a little, a little over $4 million. So we, we feel we got a good price on this project, but we'll be bringing the, the uh, project to you next uh, council meeting. Old Post Road, uh, we do have a meeting scheduled with Hayes County on November 18th to go over the project mm -hmm. coordination. There's quite a few things that need to be, we need to talk about. Uh, as we start moving the project forward. Uh, we're still working with TxDOT to get our permit and uh, we are still working with the owners to get the uh, contract with them so we can trade that, uh, do an exchange of right of way and uh, straighten that road out at uh, County Road 158. Uh, Hayes County is, has re is reviewing the draft local and local agreement and we have not heard back from them yet. I will check with them probably later this week and see where they are on it. Uh, this is the Cassetta Ranch roundabout project being done by the developer. Uh, the construction is supposed to have started today. I, I heard that they were 
putting signs up. I even got one call, the uh, person was concerned that she couldn't figure out the, have the detour route. So I tried to explain it to her. Uh, but I also uh, asked the inspectors to make sure we got all the signs up as fast as we could. So we could get the notify, could notify the public. We did do some uh, public notice on this. Uh, as you can see, there's the proposed uh, detour route for this particular project. And uh, initially we were told two months for this project to be completed, but apparently they're saying they need about three months. And with the weather, it's possible it might take as long as three months, but uh, we'll keep encouraging them to speed it up so we can get the uh, traffic back to its normal route through that uh, intersection. We do have one consent agenda item I wanted to bring up. Uh, Textot has asked us to pass an ordinance to reduce the speed limit on the I-35 northbound frontage road from 55 to 45. This is the section there that's uh, that where they're going to take out that low water crossing with those culverts and replace it with a bridge. So they wanted to see if they could get the speed limit lowered there. Since it's in the city limits, we had to pass an ordinance to do that. It is temporary. As soon as the construction is finished, it will go back to 55. And that concludes my uh, presentation. Any questions? Leon, this is uh, Councilman Tobias. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm already getting the, the messages. Cassetta Ranch Roundabout. Um, I know this started yesterday, but right now it is a major traffic issue. Um, a lot of the traffic is cutting through the Kensington Trails uh, subdivision, which is backing up all the way from BB, all the way around. I know they have to go around Daisy to go forth, but is there any way we can look at possibly during peak hours of traffic of getting, uh, and maybe this has to be directed to uh, Chief Barnett, getting some traffic flow out there? Because the lines are long and the concerns that I'm starting to hear about is emergency uh, personnel that might need to get out to these areas because the, the roads are just blocked. And it's taken like 45 minutes for some people to go all the way around. Council member, we looked at a number of options. I do want to go back to the beginning when, when the, the intent was to build this roundabout. Initially, the developer wanted to close the intersection, and we said we can't have that happen. We have to have a way to get through. People in the Button Creek Village, Button Creek Reserve neighborhood need to have a way to get out in the event of a rainstorm or rain event that blocks those uh, low water crossings on Button Lane. So they finally agreed to provide a bypass there, and it's a two-way bypass, so that allows you to come in and out. Uh, the it, And I've measured the distance, the extra distance that you have to go to get from Dacey and Button back to that intersection at uh, Goforth and Button. It's an additional two and a half miles. And yes, it does take time, but uh, we couldn't take the road. We, we looked to try to get the road back into the subdivision, but that's on private property. It's still their property. We, there would have been, have been quite a bit of road work done just to be able to do that. We looked on the north side on the short property, and that's just all farmland. And you'd have to build a, a, a road there in essence paving and bait and asphalt just to get them uh, just to get any kind of bypass. So the best, this is, has been the best solution that we could come up with on this particular intersection. And there was another way to build this and that was to build it half at a time. Mm -hmm. And when we talked to the developer about that. He said, well, that's just going to double the time to build the, the, uh, the roundabout. Plus it's better, it's better if you try to build it all at one, one construction sequence rather than trying to build half of it at a time. So, uh, rather than take four to six months to get this thing open, we, we said, let's just get it, uh, let's close it down as best as we can, keep it open as best as we can, get in there and, and get this thing built and get out of here so we can get this going again. So it was estimated for two months now, it got bumped up an extra month? Yes, sir. Three? Yes, sir, that's correct. Yeah, initially I was told two months, but this was back in uh, the summer when they were thinking yeah. about doing this, and we had, and obviously didn't have a lot of rain events coming in at that time. I, when we talked about moving this into October, I said, well, if you try to do two months in October, typically October is your last month. Now, this year it just didn't rain, which is, you know, it's, it just didn't rain, so that's a good thing if we had started in October, but now we're into November. Uh, we've got the holidays, uh, so 
if we, we're going to, like I said, we're going to continue pushing on the contractor to get this open as quickly as possible. If, if everything goes well, they could get it done in two months, but if there's delays, it, it will drag on to probably three months. Thank you. Mayor and Council, I, I did uh, ask Harper if he could jump in also as part of this report and talk about the heavy pieces of equipment that are on the consent agenda. Mayor and Council Harper Wilder, Public Works Director. Um, real quick, I just wanted to advise you all, um, this is just a follow-up to the last council meeting um, where I said that we would have some uh, street construction heavy equipment on the agenda. There's three items on there. One's going to be a milling machine, and uh, the second one will be a pad foot roller, and the third one will be a steel wheel roller. Um, all three of these are necessary items pertaining to the street construction crew. We did have actually two more, um, but my street division manager, Scott Egbert, um, had some discrepancies with the with the quotes that were given, and so we did not bring those uh, before you. We should have them on the next one. I'll answer any questions. Do you have someone in San Marcos that can confirm the runoff? Thank you, Harper. Does anybody have any more questions for Harper or Leon? I do. Um, Leon, the uh, ordinance for the traffic, uh, the decrease in the traffic speed on uh, northbound I-35, so that's just an ordinance. We are not providing any equipment or any money is going towards this, correct? That is correct, Council Member. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I didn't want TxDOT to make us be spending money on their, their project. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I, I can add a little bit to that also because they are uh, removing some landscaping as part of that project. They have added uh, a landscape, they've added a call to their landscaping plan for the next fiscal year. So we should be seeing additional trees along that corridor when oh, it's all Oh, trees. Said, um, okay. Not just mm -hmm. wildflower seed. Right. Okay. Right. Some actual trees. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, next up, well, let's move on to the consent agenda. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve items number 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Second. Uh, All right. It's been moved by Councilor Shield, seconded by Councilmember Villalobos, so we approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councilor Ellison. Yes, thank you. Um, if uh, it would be all right with the council, and we can certainly uh, move it later to the agenda. But I had uh, some questions about agenda item 17, and I might need uh, to request that we go into the executive session to inquire with the attorney on um, the legalities of that. That, that would be item okay. seven, seven, correct, Councilmember Ellison? Seven, not 17. Correct. Seven. Seven. Uh, all right. Do you, uh, Tracy, do you want to amend yes. your motion to exclude I item seven? I will amend my motion to approve items number eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Second. Okay. So the motion by Councilmember Shields is to approve consent agenda items number eight through 17, seconded by Councilmember Villalobos. Is there any discussion on that motion? Yes. Council I would Coach, like to Mayor hear Pro about item number 11. Okay. Then I will amend once again. No, it's, any? It, it's okay. We can just oh. get the, we can get the presentation right now. So, okay. Uh, you, you want to hear from Jennifer, Mayor Pro Tem? Swag it. If she if she's the one that's she, her name's on the the uh, item, whatever can speak to it. Okay. Did you have a specific question? What is it? Okay. So this is going to be a 
engaging Swagit Productions for our video um, services rather than using Nova's agenda like we have been using for the last couple of years. It's a much more upgraded system. Um, City of Austin uses it, City of Dallas. It's, uh, it's, it's a much more user-friendly and um, includes services such as searchability for audio. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, is there what? What's the cost difference? There's some one-time fees um, for equipment purchases, and then the service is incrementally a little bit more than what we're paying for Novus Agenda. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with Novus Agenda over the last couple of years. Um, things where videos got swapped with other entities that are their other clients and the only way that we even found out about it was that I noticed it and contacted them and um, the only way we were able to get our video back in place is because we had a local copy saved by our IT department. Um, that's just one <laughs> example of the many issues that we've had with Novus Agenda over the last couple of years um, and so we've been looking to upgrade that for some time. Okay, and um, this is strictly to put on the website and video, like video there. It has nothing to do with video that we can upload to Channel 10. It's, um, we, it, this will be basically the exact same thing that we have with Novus Agenda that we do have it on Channel 10. Um, it, it's, it's basically a replacement of what we have right now. So will that also improve the sound on channel 10 and um, the actual um, picture itself. Because I know that we, on channel 10, we had issues with the picture being cut, cropped off uh, on the, the TV and then having to crank up the TV to, you know, 100 to hear. Okay, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about what the, what's causing those issues to be able to say whether this would um, improve that or not, um, but we have been, it's me, Samantha, and Matt have all been working with Swagit on getting this new service rolled out. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you, um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Coach, for us starting that dialogue. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I concur, and I know, um, you know, when we st started with Novus Agenda, it certainly was something that was leading edge for us at the time and something that it advanced us as well. Uh, I have heard about uh, various times over the years, uh, the pain points with Novus Agenda. And um, I think that, you know, there, as, as Councilmember Shill uh, mentioned, there has been some issues and different things and volume and particularly, um, late at night with meetings and different things. So if there's some potential to clean some of that up as well as uh, ease some of those pain points that staff has been having, uh, because at the end of the day, this is a big part of our communication with our citizenry. And as much as we can be leading edge and innovative and ahead of the game on that, and, and, and um, I think that sh shined a bright light this year and how beneficial that was to be uh, innovative and leading edge on that. Um, I can be in support of that. Um, so I, I would like to make a motion that we approve this agenda item as written. We, we already have a motion on the floor, so it's oh, it, second. It's already it's we're we're discussing oh, yeah, That's agenda right. item numbers eight through seventeen right now. Yeah. Is there any uh, Mayor sure. Pro Tem? Do you have anything else you want to add or any other comments? No. This is Councilmember Rizzo. Okay, Sorry, Jennifer, how user-friendly is it, the program? So 
I've gone to the city of Austin's uh, web page and looked at their council meetings and everything. Um, it's it's very easy to use and everything like that. I'm not sure if the city of Austin has a service that we're looking to implement, which is where if you say a word, you can search that word. And so you can actually find in the video where a certain topic was discussed based on the audio right now. Um, we're having to use our minutes to be able to find where um, something was discussed or something like that. This will have searchability on the audio itself. So that's a really huge plus. That's, that's awesome. It's even to the public. Um, the public side could search a keyword and it'll ping where that's located. Um, I think from a staff perspective, it's they do the indexing themselves. So like right now during this council meeting, I'm indexing the video as we discuss these items so that later you can go and jump to that particular item if you wanted to listen to it. Um, that's a service that Swagit does for us. So um, awesome. that, that'll be a relief to me. <laughs> Great, that's awesome. I'm glad that's uh, user friendly for the public. We do have a an older uh, part of our uh, community that you know sometimes gets a little frustrated with uh, technology. So anything that we can do to make it more e uh, user friendly for the public, I'm all for. So thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you, Jennifer. When do you anticipate to start using this new Swagit system? Currently, um, we this contract is going to be this the kickoff for that, and then we'll be receiving equipment, um, and we'll start receiving training on using the system. I don't have a start date. Um, before they move forward with any of it, we needed to approve have the contract approved. Uh. <clears throat> This is uh, Councilmember Villalobos, and in uh, using Swagit here, we transitioned at the county. Um, it's been very user friendly in that you can take pieces of the meeting um, and send them out and, and utilize those on social media. It's very user friendly. It's very easy to communicate certain pieces. So if you do a search and pull out the discussion on a, on a specific item, you can send that byte out. And so that's. It's uh, it's been a it's been a lot easier to use than than some of the other competitors, uh, but it's also been very good, very for for me, which is very important, is to communicate to the to the community when they have a question about something, I can just take that bite and just send it to them as a specific uh, piece, and then have a conversation about it. So it's been good. I've been impressed by it. All right. Uh, any final comments? All right, I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Is there any objection to item number 17, the reduction of the speed limit on I-35 frontage road being finally passed? All right, seeing none, uh, the item is now finally passed. Uh, Councillor Ellison, you want to wait on item number seven until the end of the meeting? Okay. All right, next up, agenda item number 18, consider impossible action to approve an interlocal agreement for operations and maintenance of the Combined Emergency Communications Center. Mr. Sellers. Uh, can I, uh, Mayor, I need to recuse myself from this one. Thank you, Councilor Villalobos. All right, Mayor Council Scott Sellers, the record. I'm, I'm just going to say that uh, Councilmember Villalobos has recused. Okay, there we go. I was just waiting for that to, to come off. Uh, this item is a uh, basically the same item that was brought forward that council did approve a couple months ago. However, uh, since approval, 
Texas State University Police Department has decided to join the co-located dispatch center. So uh, they have not been negotiating with Hayes County and what you see is a revised agreement uh, with some parameters uh, to include the Texas State PD. Uh, one of those is a reduced term of the agreement. It was a, a much longer term before, now it's a five-year term, uh, as well as a 12-month termination provision uh, and some other appropriations type clauses. Uh, really, those are the, the key changes I think this is a, a great move for, for the university, great move for all of us who are part of co-location, and uh, we, we uh, again, recommend approval to the council of this agreement. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Scott. Any questions for Mr. Sellers? Yes. So adding Texas State, does that decrease any of our amount in the total bill or not? Uh, no, ma'am, uh, but fortunately they are covering their costs. Okay, well, I was hoping. It's <laughs> a good question. Any other yeah. questions or comments? Uh, I'm pretty excited about Texas State coming on board. I think it um, it demonstrates the the legs that this program has and gives us an opportunity to bring more first responder agencies together, uh, which as far as I can tell, can only improve the service because the, the service is designed uh, to work best when these jurisdictions and entities uh, collaborate in, in this way. So uh, to I'm very thankful for Texas State uh, and their participation in this program and, and look forward to uh, seeing the day when all uh, of the first responding and dispatched uh, center-based uh, entities uh, come together in the county for that uh, um, so that we can have a true regional combined co-location. So very, very good news. Uh, thank you, Scott, for your work on this. Any other comments? I'd like to make a motion to approve agenda item number 18. Second. It's been moved by the mayor, seconded by Council Member Shields. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, wait just for a second while we get Council Member Villalobos back. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring up next agenda item number 19, first reading, an ordinance of the City of Kyle, Texas, amending the City of Kyle Code of Ordinances, amending Article 2, Water and Wastewater Systems, <coughs> and Section 50-30 to authorize the imposition of water and wastewater utility liens, establishing procedures for the release of utility liens and providing for related matters. Ms. Sides. Mayor and Council, page signs for the record. This ordinance amends the city's code of ordinances to uh, add a provision that allows the city to impose liens for delinquent utility bills. State law, uh, these are water and wastewater bills. The state law allows cities to uh, enforce requirements to pay for water and wastewater utilities through imposition of a lien. And so this ordinance um, adopts the um, sections of the state law that are required in order for the city to enforce payment of water and wastewater bills in that way. There are some exceptions noted in state law and those are noted in the, the ordinance as well. Um, and I'm available if you have any questions. Hey, just council member Rizzo. Uh, so this would be across the board. This would be commercial, residential, uh, everyone who receives uh, water, wastewater from the city of Kyle, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my question is, is there a way we could do a dollar amount? Uh, I'd hate for people to start getting, uh, you know, uh, letters saying that we're going to Im impose a lien on their property when they owe maybe a couple hundred dollars or, or maybe even up to uh, four or five hundred dollars. You know, a low amount. I wanted to make sure that we uh, are not just trying to put a lien on someone just to put a lien on them. I'm, I'm making sure that we um, uh, know that we're going through some difficult times right now with COVID-19 and that we're uh, always there for the residents is kind of what I'm leaning at. 
So let me clarify one question, uh, one answer that uh, I gave before that's also going to respond to what you asked. There is an exception for homesteaded properties. A lien can't be filed um, against uh, properties that have the homestead exemption. So that takes out one set of customers that um, wouldn't be able to have a lien filed on the property. And this is because of limitations under state law for filing liens on, on, on homesteads because of Texas wanting to protect homesteads. Uh, in addition, there are some limitations on filing liens on uh, tenant property if a bill is uh, connected in a tenant's name after uh, notice that the property is a rental property, there's some limitations on filing a lien in that case. So the statute already provides some protections for people that may be um, very most severely impacted by COVID. Um, in addition to that, the lien isn't automatic. The city has to go through some steps to, to file the lien. So there's, uh, the, there's discretion within the staff to how to enforce and to do so on an equitable basis. The city council, if it wants to make it more formal, can put something in the ordinance to address it, or you can allow staff to uh, adopt policy, internal practices and policies for enforcement of this ordinance. I think I'd be more comfortable in going that route, uh, looking for a policy. Uh, so that way we give direction. We're not just uh, leaving it up to staff. I'd like to see something that we uh, put in place that, oh, oh it, I'm not looking at, you know, uh, uh, not telling people they're responsible for their, their bills, but I do know that there's circumstances sometimes. Sometimes it's people's health that plays a key part of it, and sometimes I know it uh, could be a pandemic now. It's an eye-opener for us. So I just want to make sure that we have something in place that will uh, help those that uh, can't help themselves because you just never know. You, you can be working one day and the next day you could get sick and, and you know, you're on a road to recovery six months, seven months, you know, so I just want to make sure we have something in place. Well, if, um, if council wants to give direction to set an amount during this reading or give direction to staff to come back with recommendations for second reading, that's another option. I'm good with a second reading. Give okay. for staff to come back with recommendations. For a policy? Yeah. For a policy? Yes, ma'am. So to, to clarify, Councilor Rizzo, you said that you're good to uh, try to bring something back for second reading? I'd like staff to bring something back, uh, some uh, recommendations, some type of policies we could implement to make sure that we're uh, uh, looking out for those that sometimes, you know, can look out for themselves for, due to illness or, uh, you know, something beyond our control, you know, just... Uh, you know, COVID, uh, I know we're helping out, the city's doing their part, but you know, what would have happened in, in a short time frame that two months we would have had uh, been seeing liens out for just a two month period. I wanna make sure we have limitations on how long we let someone go, how long before we implement the lien. Uh, I don't want, you know, I, I hate to see someone, you know, have one or two months, bad months, and then all of a sudden we're putting a lien on them and, and adding to it. Uh, I can understand when it's a little bit longer. Um, I'm, I'm just making sure that we're not doing after one or two months, you know. Do you think that's a question for Paige or maybe is that something more internal to uh, utility building department, uh, billing department from a policy standpoint? Uh, Pervez might want to weigh in on that. Mayor and Council, for the record, this is Pervez Mohit, City's Director of Finance. Um, if Council wishes, we staff can can draft an internal administrative policy how we would administer this ordinance, the, the requirements of this ordinance, and bring back to Council before we even implement the ordinance. Uh, or if Council wishes, we can bring back 
with the second reading and incorporate within this ordinance what policy we would be following for lien placements. I definitely would like to see that policy prehand. Yeah, I'd like to see the policy as well. I don't think we need to incorporate it into the um, ordinance just because if things change, you know, three years down the road or four you know, years down the road. And, you know, instead of having to change the ordinance, it's a lot easier to change an internal policy than it is to change a, an ordinance. So. Uh, I don't think we need it inside the ordinance, but just to have the internal policy. But I would like to see, would like for council to be able to see the policy prior to, or yeah, a second reading. We, we will bring back a policy for council's review uh, along with the second reading of this ordinance. Thank you, Perez, appreciate it. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, item number 19 as written and give staff direction to bring back a policy consistent with the discussion that we have had today uh, to be considered at second reading. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved by the mayor, seconded by Councilmember Rizzo. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Pervez, I think it would be nice, uh, if at all possible, for us to get that emailed out. Um, um, you know, the, the week ahead of time or by, by agenda setting, if, if at all possible, uh, before the next meeting so that we can have a chance to kind of process it before we're here uh, processing it uh, live. Yes, we'll do that. Okay, thank you. Any Anything else? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. We'll bring it back for second reading along with the policy next uh, at the next meeting. Next up, agenda item number 20. Uh, this was postponed at the last meeting. Consider approval of Braun Homes Cassetta Ranch right away license agreement. Uh, Mr. Coons. Sorry, I was muted. Um, <clears throat> So for the record, my name is Howard Kuntz, and what I'm going to do is actually pass this off to Paige because I think she has done most of the heavy lifting with this agreement. Um, so I'd, I'd rather she explain it to you than myself. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, Mayor and Council, Paige signs City Attorney for the record. Again, um, this item, uh, uh, I had assistance with Mr. Ullman in our office working on this item. This is connected to the um, Cassetta Ranch development and development agreement. And whenever an, 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 a developer is going to install any improvements in public right of way, um, they, we, we've got a development agreement that allows them to do so, but they also have to get a license agreement approved and that license agreement recognizes that um, they've got to carry insurance and name the city as an additional insured and, and uh, indemnify the city in case there's any kind of uh, damage or claims that arise re related to their improvements being in the right of way. It also recognizes that your you, the city has control over the right of way and you may need to cause those improvements to be removed because you need to use the right of way and you've got the absolute right to do, do that. And so that's the purpose of the, of the agreement. Um, there's a license agreement between the city of Kyle and the developer. It is for the construction, installation, maintenance of landscaping improvements, which include shrubs, trees, irrigation and grass located in the right of way of within the subdivision and the rights of way for go, go forth and button lane. Um, it appears that in addition to this item, there's an assignment, assignment and assumption of license agreement. Um, it it's, looks like it's an, an assignment of the uh, agreement to the, the HOA 
And that, that typically occurs with these, the developer takes on the obligation initially, and then the HOA, in this case, it's, it's Cassetta Ranch, Residential Community um, Inc. takes on the obligation because they assess dues and for maintenance of the improvements in the right of way. And I can answer any questions anyone may have. Thank you, Paige. Any questions? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve item number 20 as stated. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Shield, seconded by Councilmember Rizzo. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you for all your heavy lifting on that page. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. And I will say thanks to Jeff Ullman who did, a, did all the work. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. All right, next up, agenda item number 21, a resolution of the City of Call, Texas, accepting the petition for annexation of 120.41 acres, more or less, of land located in Hayes County, Texas, uh, setting the schedule, providing for open meetings and other related matters. Mr. Coons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, my name is Howard Coons. I'm the Community Development Director for the record. Um, this is a property that is currently a, a non-annexation DA property and they had plans to make some development um, uh, on the property with the city of Kyle and the terms of that uh, non-annexation DA read that um, at the time that they wish to make improvements, they will voluntarily annex into the city. And that's what this is. This is a, the request from the persons responsible for the property that are making formal requests to annex their property into the city of Kyle. And we are following the uh, state process of having this uh, read at a public meeting for the purpose of annexation. I can make myself available for any questions you might have. It's just refreshing to uh, actually have somebody want to annex into the city. I know it was under development agreement, but still. <laughs> uh, thank you, Howard. Thank you, Tracy. Any, any questions, comments? Motions. Mayor, I'd make a motion to approve the annexation. Item number. Second. Go ahead. All right, it's been a move. It's been moved by Councilor Rizzo, seconded by Councilor Ellison, that we approve agenda item number twenty-one regarding annexation. Is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, say hi. 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 <laughs> All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. All right, next up, agenda item number 22. Award a professional services contract to Coleman and Associates for the landscape design of Mary Kyle Hartson, Hartson Park and 104 South Burleson in an amount not to exceed $93,700. Mr. Earp. Mayor, Council, for the record, this is James Earp, Assistant City Manager. I was experimenting with turning my camera on, but we are driving somewhere between uh, Bastrop and College Station right now. And Howard uh, uh, accurately portrayed the fact that it looked like I was on the, weird, the uh, Blair Witch Project, part, you know, uh, filming. So uh, we're going to leave the camera off unless y'all just want to be entertained. The item before you tonight is uh, a professional services agreement with Coleman and Associates. The uh, scope of the project is to plan the the, the complete redesign uh, uh, and construction management portion of uh, the downtown uh, Square Park and Mary Kyle Hartson Park, along with the landscaping that would go along uh, with the uh, building design and construction at 104 South Burleson. Uh, since we had to rebid out the 104 South Burleson RFQ process for the design build, uh, we were very satisfied with the work that Coleman and Associates have put into uh, their conceptual designs for what they envisioned for the hardscapes and the new uh, plantings and, and walkways and playscapes and those things. Uh, we, we decided that to go ahead and uh, exercise the professional services contract. Uh, 
uh, and just award that work to Coleman and Associates. So uh, there, we didn't see a need to go back through another RFQ process. So uh, their contracts before you, uh, the dollar amount for their fees includes all of their design work as well as their construction phase, uh, ma construction management phase work. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Thank you, James. Any questions, comments? Mayor, um, <clears throat> uh, I am so glad to see this because I think it is very important that we make our city square park our gold standard for our downtown area and our um, and our park system. This is. This park is the, one of the history is part of our history of Kyle, and it will also help increase the foot traffic for the downtown corridor, to help also increase the businesses um, in the downtown corridor. So I am very happy to see this, and I look forward to a beautiful meeting place for our citizens to be able to you know meet up with each other, sit and enjoy the weather and uh, even eat some food that they may have bought at one of the uh, restaurants around the park. So um, I am very much in uh, favor of this and thank you for bringing it forward, uh, James. Thank you, Tracy, anyone else? Yes, uh, Mayor, um, well said, Councilmember Shiel. Uh, I know you've been a, a adamant and consistent supporter of our downtown area in uh, your district. Um, and I think uh, I, I concur with everything you said, and I think this would be a great addition to a uh, downtown corridor and area uh, that we we don't want to ever forget and continue to improve on. Um, I think that the selection of this particular uh, professional service, uh, Coleman Associates, is more than capable. I have seen uh, some of their work that they've uh, done around the state, anywhere from doing all the landscaping outside of Kyle uh, Field down in College Station to uh, a lot of work in uh, the Central Texas area, the uh, uh, landscaping and, and green roof there at the new Austin Library and downtown. Uh, so they are more than capable and a great resume uh, that we um, of work that Coleman and Associates have done. So I'm very confident in this professional service provider and I look forward to uh, seeing their work um, here in Kyle. Thank Council you, Councilor Ellison. Any, what else? This is Council Member Rizzo. Yeah, Mayor, this is Alex Villalobos. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, Council Member Go Rizzo. ahead, Alex. Mm -hmm. Just the, uh, just want to echo those, those comments from uh, Council Member Shield. Uh, I, I think I think we've hit those things spot on. Um, it's the history. It's it's the it's it's what it's it's another cornerstone for the community as we continue to just uh, re redevelop it and 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 and, and really beautify it um, and uh, make it even more beautiful with all the attraction of the landscaping that's coming forward. So this is a uh, I'm excited about this. I'm glad that we're starting here. I think that it will. Uh, when it's done, will inspire other uh, developments in the downtown area. So, um, very proud to be a part of this. Thank you. Mayor, Councilmember Rizzo, um, I just want to say that I'm really looking forward to seeing our downtown park uh, be, with amazing landscaping in front of it. Uh, when I was a kid growing up here, riding my bike in front of it, you know, I, I was, thought it was a great part of Kyle, but I, I always knew there was a little bit missing. And I travel now, I drive a lot through uh, different states now as an adult, and I see towns smaller than ours that have amazing small uh, courthouses with beautiful landscaping around it. And uh, I sit there and say, we can do a little bit better. And I'm glad that we're moving forward on this, and I look forward to uh, seeing families out there enjoying shade, enjoying the beautiful landscape out there, and uh, being a meeting place for the residents of Kyle. It's a long time coming, and I'm glad we're finally getting there. Thank you. 
all council and everybody. Thank you, Councilor Rizzo. Uh, I, I would actually uh, want to add to what's already been stated uh, as well. And just to, for any, anyone in the community who's listening to us discuss this, uh, I certainly don't think it's a council's intent, certainly not my intent to say that the downtown area is languishing from the standpoint of walkability. Our, our square is beautiful as it is. And it's been, you know, we've recently trimmed, uh, trimmed the trees. We've installed a, you know, uh, a few years ago, we, uh, uh, a nice fountain. Now Burleson Street coming in with uh, major road improvements and, and urban streetscapes. Uh, those are all uh, very important components. Uh, this this project that we've been undertaking now for uh, several months is designed to amplify and build upon the historic nature of the square uh, and the beauty within. So uh, I'm uh, very excited to see Ms. Coleman get to work uh, on the design of the, the, the landscaping. I know she's um, very well regarded uh, and has a, uh, has a resume that speaks for itself in terms of the projects she's worked on uh, before. Uh, we know that there's going to be considerations with the historical commission that we're going to need to make sure that we're working with them and um, uh, not disturbing the historical nature of the square. I know that's going to be Anne's commitment as well as this council, uh, but at the same time, uh, bringing it uh, forward in such a way that the, uh, the square can be used by more people uh, and can be uh, even more beautiful than it is now. Uh, and it, as it has been said uh, uh, by the other council members, you know, the, the, the facility, the building uh, that, that we're trying to construct, uh, which is uh, a big part of this project that we're working on, is, uh, is designed to help foster uh, commercial pedestrian traffic in, in our square so that uh, over time, uh, more and more um, uh, economic prosperity can be uh, seen in, in, in and around specifically the square, which is something that uh, even though this council has, has had a hard time figuring out the, the path forward for the greater downtown area, something we've all been in agreement on is that the square itself uh, is an area that we want to see uh, become more lively and get more investment and have more um, quality of life businesses there and, and uh, boutique retail and restaurants. And I think this is the uh, the right step in that direction. So um, uh, with that, uh, I, I don't really have anything else to add except to say that I, I'm, I'm excited to cast this vote uh, and I'm, I'm excited to continue trying um, to elevate our downtown area the way I know uh, that the folks who live there as well as the greater com uh, uh, Kyle community and of course the downtown business owners all desire. I, uh, I echo everything the council said. Um, I'm looking forward to this project. I just wanted to say uh, thank you, James, for all the hard work. I know you've put a lot of time and effort into this, and it hasn't been easy. So uh, just thank you. Thank you. And thanks, James and Paige. And Paige. Yep. Mayor, Anything else? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Council Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Shields, seconded by Councilmember Ellison, uh, that we approve agenda item number 22. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Next up, agenda item number 23. This item was also postponed at the last uh, meeting. Second reading, an ordinance amending chapter 53 of the city of Kyle, Texas for the purpose of assigning original zoning to approximately 128.58 acres of land from agriculture to single family residential R13. Approximately 30 acres of land from uh, uh, to residential townhomes R1T and approximately 20.37 acres of land to community commercial for the property located off of East Post Road, just north of Quail Ridge subdivision. Uh, this item is postponed. I know we're still working through some issues. Mr. Coons, go ahead. Yes, Do you have anything Mayor, um, again, Howard Coons for the record, and it's my understanding and the city manager will back me up that um, this item is still undergoing discussions behind the scenes. And I believe that the request on their part was to postpone this to a date certain, which would be the next voting meeting on November, Tuesday, November the 17th. Mr. Sellers, you concur? Yes, sir. That's correct. 
And I'd like to make a motion to postpone this item until the next regularly scheduled council meeting, which should be held on November 17th. Second. It's been moved by the mayor, seconded by Councilman Rizzo. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah, I would uh, like to make a request that any material that we need for this uh, vote at the next meeting uh, not come any later than when the agenda is first posted so that we have time to review the material. Will do. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sellers. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. All right, next up, uh, city manager's report. Okay, Mayor Council, uh, Scott Sellers for the record again, uh, sharing my screen now. All right, several items on the city manager's report. First, uh, we did declare a stage two drought as of October 22nd. Uh, you'll see here on the slide some of the rules uh, for irrigating uh, during that time. And uh, this is something we, we typically do each year. This year it's even more important as we're making changes to our well foresight. So this, this will help us balance out our water situation through the city during the the construction period. Uh, we had a great spooktacular cruise event uh, hosted by our Parks and Rec Department. Uh, we had 18 vendors participate. The goal was to give the Cal community an opportunity to come together and get into the Halloween spirit. We had 500 plus vehicles that attended. If you happen to be one of those, uh, which I, I passed through, it was uh, quite the, the wild spectacle. There were so many vehicles in, in such a great, great event. Uh, I really think this brought the community out. We're already making plans to make it a better event for next year, but uh, I want to thank, again, PARD and everyone who participated. We have a couple more mass food distribution events coming forward uh, at Lehman High School, November 14th and December 12th. Uh, from 8 to 11 volunteers are needed. Our, I know our last uh, distribution event was, was very well attended. We had a, a lot of volunteers as well, so I want to thank the community for that. Again, it's, it's open to all, no registration required, and our partnership with the Central Texas Food Bank is, is very strong. I didn't know if Council wanted to have any uh, feedback on this item before I move forward. Yeah, I, I just wanted to I just wanted to thank uh, the council members that participated, Councilmember Villalobos and Tobias for stepping up. Unfortunately, I had an emergency uh, happen and wasn't able to attend. So thank y'all because if you know me, I'm a hands-on guy, and when I'm not there, I feel like things don't run right. But you gave me the guarantee that everything was going good. So thank you. You made me feel better. But I want to thank everybody that came out and participated. I want to thank Jeff Gonzalez with the Central Texas Food Bank as well for all his uh, work and collaboration. Uh, when this first, when we first started these, uh, Jeff reached out to me and, and we were able to collaborate with the uh, city, with uh, different entities, and, and get these this much needed uh, relief to the citizens of Kyle. And I just want to thank everyone that's been involved with this staff. Um, I know Jerry's worked hard on this as well. Scott, uh, everyone, Jennifer, uh, Samantha for your communications, getting the word out. Uh, I could go on and on because everybody. This is a team effort, totally, and I, it, this wouldn't happen unless there was a a great team behind it. And I just want to thank everyone. Thank you very much. And 11, over eleven hundred families. Um, I think we got the final count was uh, eleven hundred and ten families that day. And by talking to the coordinator that day, uh, Layman was a pretty good uh, distribution site. They said it ran by pretty smooth. So just uh, again, like uh, Councilman Reeves was saying, thank you everybody for uh, pushing this through and we're excited for the next two. Thank you. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Villalobos. <clears throat> I can't say enough uh, about this event and I, I think the one impression that comes to mind uh, for every single one that I've worked um, has been that we always see our community members, they recognize us, they appreciate what we're doing, 
And, and sometimes it can get emotional when you see them in their eyes and, and, and knowing that they really need this, this lift. So it's, um, I can't say enough about these events and, and, and look forward to continuing to be a part of these for, uh, you know, as long as we need them. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's such a uh, uplifting feeling to, to be out there and, and, and to have some of them recognize who you are and know that you're doing, you're doing God's work. And, um, and they appreciate it. Great. Uh, and finally, we do have a couple of uh, upcoming meetings and, and a holiday to, to talk about. Uh, our November 10th TERS board meeting, that is at 7 p.m. Uh, so we've, we've talked about it in the past. want to make sure it's still on your calendars, November 10th. And is that completely virtual or is that hybrid? That is a virtual meeting. Great question. November 11th is a city holiday, city uh, hall and, and other services uh, that typically close for city holidays will be closed. And then finally, uh, November 17th, uh, we, we had looked at that becoming the, the canvas for our election. Uh, so this special council meeting uh, was to talk about the canvas. Now, this is a little larger uh, conversation because we do need to uh, talk about the date. Today, we, we looked at the uh, city of San Marcos with their runoff election. Uh, they had initially targeted with uh, correspondence from Hayes County, they had initially targeted the 1st of December. Uh, we have learned uh, this evening that they have changed that date to the 8th of December for their runoff. That's, uh, I believe that's a Tuesday, the 8th. And uh, Hayes County has indicated that they would like us, if at all possible, to, to coordinate those runoff dates with the city of San Marcos. Uh, I don't think it's it's absolutely necess uh, necessity to do so, uh, but that is their request for Tuesday the eighth. Uh, if that is the case uh, that that we target that date, then it does give us a little bit more of a window for the canvas. And uh, I know Jennifer and Paige were looking at those dates, and this is really more of a, a larger conversation to determine that date first, and then we can kind of back into. The, the date for canvassing, uh, the, the early voting date, and then the locations as well. So uh, with that, I'm gonna open the floor to council to discuss the, the special meeting for, for uh, the runoff election, and then we'll, we'll hit the canvas. Uh, Scott, I think I need to recuse myself for this one. Um, Councilor Shale, I don't think that's necessary. I, I don't think you're, you you need to recuse on this. But if Paige wants to weigh in, it's not necessary. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm. I'm. It looks to me like San Marcos has said that they're uh, going to be trying to uh, call the election on the 16th, um, which is the the day before the special meeting, which I think would give the 20 day window that they're saying they, that we will need, um, uh, is the 16th a day that we can do the special canvassing meeting. And just as a uh, reminder, only two council members have to be there to canvass. Uh, it's two votes, one to canvass the election and two to call for the, uh, the runoff, but it does not require a quorum. Um, so we could probably do it during the day or in normally canvassing and calling the election happens kind of in the morning times, uh, but it's really just whenever we can coordinate. But obviously with the tight window, um, I, certainly not my desire to, uh, to extend another week of campaigning, but I understand uh, that we have to follow state law here. And I think we uh, just weren't able, we're not gonna be able to get it by the first. Uh, my personal preference would be to coordinate with San Marcos because I think that is uh, allows for a better communication in the region about when the runoff is. It's already going to be hard enough to get uh, uh, our community's heads wrapped around the idea of coming back out to vote after what we all just collectively went through. Um, so I, my thoughts would be canvas on the 16th uh, and then uh, have our meeting on the 17th regularly, but keep those separate.
Paige, uh, Paige, do you want to weigh in on that? Just uh, for informational purposes, the runoff election, there's a range. You can, um, you can hold the runoff election between the 20th and the 45th day after the election. So that gives you some flexibility on the 8th as well within 20 to 45 days of canva the canvas period is i think between the 6th and the 17th I, I understand you may not have election results until the 10th the official um so if you call some any time between the 10th and the 17th if you canvas the election any time between those dates you can uh, hold a runoff election on the 8th Let's see. Yeah. I don't know if that was helpful or unhelpful. So uh, I, we just need to give Scott some feedback as to the date where at least a few yeah. of us can commit to be there. Yeah. And, and I, th I think you need to have a quorum to call the runoff. You can have less than a quorum to canvas, but I think you've got to have a quorum to, to call the runoff election. So, um, I concur with the, the comments of uh, the cohesiveness and, and getting on the same page for communication purposes with the rest of the county and, and cities in our area for an election on the 8th. Um, I could be available on the 16th uh, at any time that day as well. Another option might be uh, if we if it's true that we're going to have the uh, the county's official numbers on the tenth that we the, you know the council will be meeting on the seventeenth as a part of the TERS board. So if the ter if the TERS board meeting starts at seven, uh, we could schedule a six forty five meeting um, and uh, and go that route as well, so that we don't have to do anything special. But that's assuming that the that we can call it. <laughs> right. That makes sense to me. Um, since I don't have to recuse myself, I can say that. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, meeting before the um, the church board on the 11th. 10th. 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 Tuesday the 10th. Tuesday. Okay. I'm losing my mind. Um, so yes, Tuesday the 10th, as long as we have the official numbers that day. And, and there's a guarantee we'll have those numbers by the 10th. Scott? That the county is said by, by the 10th, and I, I believe by close of business on the 10th, so we should be set. Okay, I'm good with it. Yeah, and, and worst case scenario is that they don't, in which case we'll just Go to the reschedule it 13th mm -hmm. or 16th. 16th. Yeah. 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 And I'll, I'll be available we'll have time to, if we to need reschedule. It. I think we'll have the council so members let's, need it. Whatever let's we plan the fallback date. The fallback date would be the 16th to canvas and call the election, but the primary goal and desire would be to do both of those items just prior to the terse board meeting on the 10th. Sound good, Scott? Yes, sir. That sounds great. All right. Thank you. Scott, yes, um, I just want to make a statement. Um, first of all, uh, I want to thank all my fellow council members uh, for being wonderful people to work with over the past three years. It has been a joy to serve the city of Kyle. And I do appreciate all of you. Scott, thank you for all of you have done. Um, this is not my end of service for the city of Kyle. I will be here to do anything anybody needs of me. Um, Kathy, I know you're out there. Um, you have me for the uh, Great River cleanup, Sarah. You know you've got me for both the Spring Festival and Pie in the Sky. You know, we can't leave Susan and, jo and Josh on their own. Um, 
also um, to to Yvonne. You'll be working with a great group of people. Um, please work with them. And um, and understand that they are just as passionate about the city as you are. And they want what's best for the city. And please work with them. That is the best way to make this city a better overall place to live, work, and just have fun in. And then to the residents of Kyle. Um, again, kind of keeping with the theme that to make Kyle the best place to live, work, play is for everybody to come together. And not East versus West, not Originals versus the um, Implants, um, and not Downtown versus Uptown, but everybody's here for the city of Kyle. And uh, that's the only way this city will be the best possible city that it can be. So with that, I just want to say once again, thank you. <clears throat> Tracy, uh, as a resident of uh, District 2, I want to thank you for being my council member. I want to thank you for all the work, all the time commitment that you gave to our district and to the city. Thank you for your sacrifices. It, serving the community is never uh, an easy job. There's a lot of hard work, there's a lot of commitment, there's a lot of time that comes into preparation for meetings and meeting with constituents. Thank you for the last three years. Thank you for your service. May God bless you. Thank you. Tracy, it's been uh, this is Councilmember Villalobos, and it's been uh, it's been an honor to work with you. Thank you for keeping us on task when it was necessary, uh, <laughs> and that's been many times. It's keeping us directed and centered, uh, not only uh, out here on the dais, but uh, in our uh, in our executive meetings as well. Uh, you, you are correct. It's it's the, the theme of uh, working together is how we can accomplish things, accomplish great things, and. Uh, our legacy together is, is going to affect many people for many, many years to come. Um, as you know, um, uh, you know, we're both in this same thing together and that, you know, I'm, I'm, I, uh, my position I'm leaving to, to, to try to accomplish other things as well. And, and it has been an honor to work with everybody here on the dais. It has been uh, such a uh, heartfelt uh, opportunity to give of myself and to learn from many different people that I've come in contact with. Um, and I know that uh, in some of the things that we've accomplished, we, we accomplished with that goal in mind is to make it better uh, than when we found it. And uh, I appreciate the, uh, the staff and the council for being here lockstep uh, and creating these opportunities for a lot of different people but then also creating the opportunities for me to meet all of you and, and the staff members and, and, and many of the citizens um, that, that, that have been here and continue to move into Kyle. It's one of the best cities in the nation. Um, and I'm just happy that uh, I worked with you to have a small part in what it is today. Thank you. And thank you, Alex. Tracy, it's hard to know what to say after that. Um, <laughs> hard to know how to keep uh, uh, moving on. I, I, I don't really know how to imagine this council without you. It, you've been such a, um, uh, a strong, steady, caring 
uh, passionate, compassionate presence on this council. Um, the, you know, I, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> and I may be out there with you uh, <laughs> uh, volunteering here before too long. But the, the reality is you, you and I both, we've talked about it so many times that, you know, we don't know what the future holds. We only know the opportunities to have in front of us. And, and when given the opportunity to serve, you have, you have, uh, you have seized that calling. Um, you have devoted yourself to the city of Kyle, not only for the last three years, but uh, longer. Uh, and I anticipate uh, in, uh, into the future as well. And, and so um, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for, you. Thank you for everything you've done for the city of Kyle. Um, you, you, you cared for your district. You, you advocated for your district. You, you, you spoke up uh, for your district um, year after year, month after month, meeting after meeting uh, when things were uh, moving and shaking and decisions were being made. Uh, there was no doubt in my mind that you filtered everything through not only what is in the best uh, interest of the city of Kyle, but uh, how it would affect your district and, and how can you make your district better um, throughout the decisions that we've been making over the course of these three years. And so uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, uh, the residents of district two, um, you know, uh, are, indebted to you in a way that I don't know that they'll ever be able to fully understand uh, or repay. Um, uh, but, but I understand it. And this council understands uh, who you are, what you've done for the city, how you've um, um, it's just been uh, uh, just a steady, uh, steady and compassionate and kind voice and person. Uh, you, you are uh, everything that elected officials uh, uh, are, are known for, for, you are the opposite of that. Uh, you, you are the, you are the most genuine, caring and honest person, um, uh, uh, that I know. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, for being you. Uh, and, uh, I look forward to next week, next year. Most definitely. Be okay. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Yeah, any, anybody else have any comments uh, before we move on? Or was that the last one, Scott? Mm -hmm. I'll let yeah, seven thank, th thank you, Tracy and Alex, really from staff. It's, it's been an honor to work with both of you. Uh, Mayor, we, we do have two additional items for executive session as well as the item number seven that was that was moved from consent. Okay, we'll, we'll right. go there. Uh, actually, we need a, a couple things on Tracy's comments, but as far as uh, scheduling is concerned, uh, the, the canvassing is not uh, uh, the swearing in. So mm -hmm. just to make sure everybody is aware. So that, that meeting will go quickly, and uh, but the 17th meeting will be when the new council members, Councilor Kale and Councilor Bradshaw are sworn in. Uh, so we'll need to uh, coordinate uh, a little bit. I'm not sure if uh, we might push executive session a little further back and to allow for a little more time prior to the meeting uh, for us to go through some of the ceremonial aspects of saying goodbye to Councilmember Villalobos and Councilmember Shield, uh, as well as saying hello uh, to the new council members. We'll, yeah, I think historically we've started that about an hour ahead of time. Um, so the agenda will probably look a little different on the 17th. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if we need to bring some snacks, maybe Jennifer and Carla for that, um, for that time, but that'll be something we'll need to be coordinating. And I, I would like to say that um, uh, considering the significance of that meeting, uh, uh, that it, uh, it certainly is my intention to be there in person, masked up and uh, socially distanced. But uh, you know, obviously I think those swearing ends, if we can accomplish it, if we can accomplish it safely, we should be done uh, in person. Uh, plus it'd be nice to be together with the council again, uh, all as one group for the first time since what, April? <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure when we um, went to this safer but more distanced format. Uh, but just as an FYI, that's, that's my goal and my intention. Uh, hopefully the council would, uh, can all be there on that day. Did I miss anything on that from a logistics standpoint, Scott? 
Uh, I'm, I'm thinking out loud, but no, I think as long, if we can have our special meeting to call the the runoff election on the, the 10th, as well as do okay. the canvas, I think we're, we're set with everything. Okay. All right. Well, with that, let's uh, let's move on to uh, back to executive session. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor Shield. <laughs> Pursuant to Chapter Five Five One Texas Government Code, the City Council reserves the right to convene into executive session from time to time as deemed necessary during this meeting. The City Council may convene into executive session pursuant to any. A lawful exception contained in Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, including any or all of the following topics. Pending or contemplated litigation or to seek the advice of the city attorney pursuant to Section 551.071. Low income development in, on Philomena. Changeable electronic variable uh, message sign. And item number seven. Um, the city of Kyle's spending plan of the coronavirus relief funds. Seven to zero. There was no action taken during executive session. Uh, there will be action taken now, uh, or is it? Are we are we taking action out of executive session, or are we just bringing up item seven? I'm sorry. Bring up, bring back item seven. Bring up item seven. Okay, so the, there was no action taken during executive session. There will be no action taken now. Uh, next up, uh, agenda item number seven, and I apologize, uh, uh, Councilor Shield. Can you read the item for me, please? Item number seven, sure. Yes. Approve the city of Kyle's spending plan for the Corona relief funds for submission to Texas Department of Emergency Management, TEDM, by the deadline of November 13th, 2020. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city of Kyle's spending plan for the coronavirus relief funds for submission to TEDM by the deadline of November 13th and authorize the city manager to adjust the plan and add or remove expenditures as appropriate in compliance with TEDM guidelines. Second. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Ellison, seconded by Councilmember Shield. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries seven to zero. Mayor. Mayor. Oh, go ahead. No. Okay. Councilor Shield. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> it's been moved by Councilor Shield, seconded by Councilor Rizzo. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. N Nay. Motion carries six to one. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Get oh, some rest. Crazy election night last night, so let's get some rest. Yeah. <laughs>